Time and time again, people say that props, props are one of the greatest sources of frustration in our food photography. What to do with them, where to put them, how to select them, colors, textures, shapes, sizes, all those things. So we're gonna spend a couple weeks talking specifically about props, and today I wanna share with you some of the things that I always keep in mind whenever I'm selecting props and share with you some of my favorites. <laughs> With Bacon Bacon, I'm Joni Simon. Welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography. And the goal here is to improve your food photography skills so you can feel confident behind the camera. And today we are talking about props. Specifically, I'm talking about six different things that I always have going on in the back of my mind whenever I'm looking for props, whenever I'm on the hunt for the perfect prop. These are things that I keep in mind uh, and things that I think are really helpful in building your props collection. Now you definitely wanna stay tuned to the end though because I have selected a certain number of props from my collection that I've never actually shot with and I want you to help me pick which one I should shoot with for a behind the scenes video next week. So number one, something that's always in the back of my mind whenever I'm looking at props, when I'm looking at dishes and plates and different things, is that I'm always looking for something with a little bit of subtle texture. And you know, granted, some of this is going to be informed by your particular aesthetic, the kinds of images you're looking to create or the kinds of images that your clients are looking for. Uh, but in general, when it comes to food photography, texture really communicates. It gives us a certain feeling, a visceral sense of the image and so when we can find plates um, specifically that have some sort of texture to them something subtle so that it's not overwhelming the food uh, but it still gives a little character those can be really great like multi-use pieces in your collection for example um, I really love these plates from Nam Living and I found this ceramicist through just following different folks on Instagram who I realized were using these I think B. Lobus was one of the first people that I noticed um, was using these. And so you can buy these, they're based in the UK, but I love this because it is, otherwise it's kind of a plain white plate, um, but it's got more of that matte sense. But I really love the texture, just those little flecks that you see in there um, really add interest and really help to elevate the food and just add more character to the overall image. Another set that I love that has a very similar thing going on, kind of a, a larger speckle here, but I. I find that I can shoot anything on these. Like if I want a softball pitch, like my creativity is kind of low and I just need to photograph, like I've got some great food and I just want it to look good. Like pretty much everything looks good on these particular set. And these are from KJ Pottery. Um, they come in a variety of colors. I've got this gray and I also have their white set. Um, I also have the little salad plate and these I find are great all purpose, but that just that little bit of speckle adds a lot of character to the image, a lot of texture and interest. All right, so number two, when it comes specifically to bowls, something that I'm always on the lookout for is a really nice shallow bowl. That if the bowl is too deep, that it's gonna take a lot of food to fill that bowl, and you're gonna potentially have to create like a false bottom in order to bring the food up to the top. And two, it's gonna be a more of a challenge to light a deeper bowl, to get the light to reach into the bowl. Uh, and so for example, I, again, going to Nam Living, these are really great, and again, we're talking about the texture um, a really nice neutral but the depth on this is perfect that you know you can throw some yogurt in here oatmeal these work great for soup that you don't have to overwhelm the bowl with a ton of the actual food um, it makes the styling process a lot easier and also makes lighting it a lot easier now, one thing that I find I can never have too many of, like, and, and this is God's honest truth, they are a lot of fun to purchase, but I also use them all the time, are a variety of different sizes of dip bowls. Now, my favorite set, which has appeared in so many different photos, and is sort of that thing when, you know, you're styling a scene, you've got the food looking great, but you're like, I just need some other little pieces to add to the composition. Like, I just need to throw something in there, that little dip bowls are really great for that. And this particular set um, by Hearth and Hand by Magnolia, so Chip and Joanna Gaines, and this comes from Target, so if you're not familiar with this brand, or you can go to magnolia.com, I think, I'll link it down below. Um, but this is a really great size, right? We've got the little guy, we've got the medium sized guy, and so you can throw your greens in there, or if you wanna throw different ingredients in there, these are really helpful for that. And they're just a really nice soft neutral, um, they're not super shiny. One of the drawbacks on this particular set though is if you are shooting with clear um, 
like liquids and things like that for like a top down shot that you do have the measurements in there. So I like something a little bit more, uh, you know, basic. And so for example, this set from also from Target by Chrissy Teigen. She's got some really great pieces as well that are really fun to work with. Um, these are a little shinier. I don't mind shiny. A lot of people are like, no, don't put me shiny in the scene. I think shiny can add some uh, fun dynamics as far as the lighting and whatnot. But these again are really great neutral color, great sense of texture going on here. And just a little something you can throw in the scene. But now, so far, what I've shown you are all more lighter colored examples, which you're going to use in a light and airy or sort of your standard scene. If you're looking for dark and moody, you're going to want to make sure that those particular props now are maybe in warmer, rich wood colors, um, darker tones, darker metals. Um, I actually picked up this set yesterday because I saw them and I was like, ah, oh, more dip bowls. I need more dip bowls in my life. Um, these are maybe still a little bit lighter, but could kind of go either way into a lighter scene or into a darker scene. So just something to keep in mind in terms of the aesthetic that you're trying to create, that neutrals are great, but you're going to want to have potentially, depending on the style of photography that you do, the style of lighting that you do, you might want those to tend more to the lighter side of the palette or the darker side. Oh, and because I know you're going to say, wait, where did you get those? These, uh, the spring shop, I got these over at Hobby Lobby. I honestly don't find a ton of props at Hobby Lobby, but I just got lucky yesterday. I'm, I'm just always <laughs> scanning. I do find that, you know, I personally enjoy shopping for props. And, you know, having done a good number of shoots at this point in time, you know, and there's that one point where you're like, oh, if only I had a blah, 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 you know? So you just, you're always collecting props that maybe you're not gonna use them next week, maybe you're not gonna use them tomorrow, but, you know, six months from now when you're in the middle of that shoot and you're like, oh, I need this exact ramekin and you have it like, that's <laughs> the best feeling ever. Now, all this being said though too, you're like, I'm starting to see that first of all, I don't have the storage space for all of this. Uh, and this gets kind of expensive. In a lot of major cities, there are props shops, like people who are professional props houses. And these are places that you can go to rent props, which that can be a really great solution. Now here, unfortunately in Phoenix, we really like that I know of, if somebody knows of it, um, um, there's not a great props location. There's some like theatrical stuff, but that's that's not what I'm looking for for my food photography. Um, but LA, New York, Chicago, Toronto, London, places like that, there's gonna be a lot of great props uh, rental shops. So that can be a really great solution if you don't have the space or the budget to build your own props collection. Now, one of the things that I wanna tell you when it comes to silverware and your pieces in general, again, if you are gonna be investing in props that I think it is really helpful to have at least three or more of different pieces. And the reason being that sometimes, you know, you'll just photograph a single bowl with single plate or a single whatever, single spoon in it. But a lot of times I find that it is helpful to have multiples, right? That we have, a, you know, like a scene of pot de right? That we talked about last week in the Nikon video. And that, you know, we've got multiples in that scene and it looks nice to have multiple spoons. But if you only have two, you know, we talk about, you know, the idea of the rule of odds, which is not a rule, but you know, things can look a little more visually pleasing if you you have an odd number of items and so I find that when I'm buying props I buy them in at least in a set of three if not more um, so for example you know three of these longer teaspoons and it's so nice that then we can just set these to the side we can stack them together it adds a sense of balance it adds some interest um, for example these forks I got these in a set of four these were a really great find at an antique store in Petaluma California that was like a super score I was super excited about that They've got sort of this gold undertone to them and I totally love these. So for sure, if you haven't hit up the local antique stores, uh, those can be a really great place to find some unique items like that. All right, so next up, oh God, these are heavy. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that I find is helpful, and maybe this is, again, maybe more of my personal aesthetic, but I do find it a bit easier to work with cooler toned props. Now, again, this is really gonna be informed based on your particular style. Um, but for example, I bought this set from um, MM Clay, mm Clay, I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, they are absolutely beautiful. They took forever and a day to arrive. I mean, it, it took like four months for these to get to my house. 
house. Um, but they are handmade, they're beautiful. Um, but for example, this plate. Now I love this plate. I love the texture. I love everything going on with this. But this warmer tone, it's been a challenge. I've tried to throw it in a couple different images and it just hasn't totally worked. Um, just in terms of like bread, I put some bread on there at one point for a toast shot and the bread kind of got lost in terms of that color. Um, whereas when we start to pull in again, more neutrals, more cooler tones, that, that can create a really nice contrast. Um, I've even found like this green, this has been really nice to work with and throwing a salad in there that we can really amplify those greens um, so I do find it easier personally to work with cooler toned props something with a cooler undertone again more than neutrals um, that's not to say though that we can't have success with the warmer tones you're just gonna have to be more thoughtful though because a lot of food in and of itself is warmer toned. that if we're creating contrast the warm on warm can be a challenge but not impossible and certainly an opportunity for some growth and some creativity all right we've worked through most of our stack over here we've got our final final little piece this is this beautiful tray and my final tip for today's video um, is that it's helpful to have a certain amount of trays the trays from a composition standpoint can really help us in creating layers in our images that it's not just a plate on a surface that can absolutely be beautiful and is something I love to do but if you're like hmm it's just kind of lacking something that it can really help to elevate an image by layering different items on top of each other you know a napkin with a bowl and then the food um, or a tray and then the bowls and then the food you know that it's creating some depth in our image and so now this one's a little wild and crazy admittedly this is not like necessarily a staple piece but this is one that I came across in an antique store in California and I was like oh my goodness like uh, this is a little wild and crazy this is outside my comfort zone but I totally love it um, particularly because it's a copper it's a copper tray and it's got this beautiful patina patina is something if you're familiar with them um, you know antiquing and metalwork and things like that uh, that a beautiful patina can just really add so much character and depth to our image and so I've done a couple shots on this and I've loved all of them especially because we've got these subtle greens but then we've got these really warm rich reds that are coming through um, so a piece like this is definitely not like a standard must have but having a couple of these pieces at your disposal things that are just interesting exciting um, similarly like the oven x trays uh, oven x is something you can find a lot of on ebay that's another place that i personally go a lot of times for props is checking out ebay uh, and searching different keywords like i search oven x and they actually have like you know muffin tins and cake tins uh, this is a cake tray i think this is what nine by 13 ish oh, it's a 14 inch they can also really help in framing your subject in terms of composition now if you miss my composition series definitely go check that out because you'll understand a little bit more what i'm talking about when i reference framing and so just having those some helpful trays on hand can really help to round out your props collection but now as i mentioned at the beginning of the video now at this point it is your turn to vote because i have a lot of props there <laughs> I'm always picking up props. I'm like, oh, this will be great someday. And then I don't shoot with it, right? Uh, because it is so nice that when that shoot does pop up and you have the perfect piece for it, I mean, there is nothing more satisfying than that. Uh, but there's quite a few props that I've, I've just never shot with. And so I want you guys to help me pick what I'm going to shoot with for next week's video. What I've got is you can find that link down below is you can vote from the various props that I'm going to show you here in just a second. Uh, you're going to pick one and whichever one gets the most votes, I'm gonna do a behind the scenes video next week. I'm gonna use it in a shoot, show you how I made the creative decisions and take you behind the scenes of prop styling for a shoot. So first up, we have got these cute little bowls. They're, they're a little busted, but nothing a little Photoshop can't fix in terms of some of the rust and whatnot. Um, but it's like this whole set of these multiple bowls and I just love the color, I love the texture, um, I love the size of them. And so option number one, all right so then option number two oh my gosh i got these i got these on etsy oh my gosh i love these i've not shot with these they're so pretty though i love that subtle texture i love that little sense of green although i feel like the color wise these might pose a little bit of a challenge so i'm gonna have to really think uh through the specific food that we're shooting on this but another option number two number three <laughs> 
because <laughs> everybody needs a large scoop in their life. This just reminded me of, I don't know, like scooping coffee beans or scooping bulk foods. And so, um, you know, this could be a lot of fun to work with. I don't know what I would shoot with this, but definitely something that I'd love to shoot with. So option number three. All right, then option, option number four. Wait, this is option number four. One, two, three three, four. Yep. Option number four are these little guys. Again, another uh, antique store find. These little copper dishes. I don't, I'm thinking like maybe like an egg or a breakfast something or I, I don't even know. So these little copper dishes, this is number four. And then number five are these beautiful little coupe glasses. And these are actually really special. These were my grandmother's. Well, I don't know, we could do a dessert in these. We could do drinks in these. Lots, lots of options here. So that's option number five. So go ahead and cast your vote for which of the five props you wanna see me work with in next week's video. I've got that link down below. Can't wait to see your votes and to come up with something crafty and fun for next week. And so with that, that. Hopefully this gave you some insights into building your props collection. I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope you stay out of trouble and I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye.